How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a pretty powerful bow using no power tools, no heat, and it's going to cost you about $10. Now I did a video pretty similar to this a while ago, but what I did in that video was I used power tools for pretty much all the steps, and then I just told you guys about alternative ways to do it that didn't use any power tools. This one I'm actually going to be showing you step by step how to do it with the hand tools. It's really, really simple. Let's just get to work on it. All right, really minimal building supplies on this one. We've got some paracord, some duct tape, five feet of three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC, and then we've got these three driveway markers right here. And for the tools, we've got a rat tail file, a tape measure, a sharpie, and a little hacksaw. So first we're gonna mark about an inch from the end of the PVC, and then we're gonna use our rat tail file to cut a notch into the PVC. Then once it's about a quarter inch deep, I'm gonna give the edges a little bit of a frown so that the string can more naturally fit into it. It should look a little bit like this when you're finished. So now you're gonna sight down the PVC and use it to mark on the other end of the PVC where you're gonna put your notch and make sure it's perfectly in line with the one that you did up here. Okay, when I came in here, it was literally 90 degrees and so sunny that it like hurt to go outside. I have no idea what the heck is going on here. So now that we've got both of our notches cut in the PVC, we're gonna cut one of the fiberglass highway markers right in half. Now I always like to wear gloves when I cut fiberglass because I just really hate the splinters, but a lot of people don't really mind. It's just really annoying to me, you can do whatever you want. We've got these two even halves, now we're going to mark these in the middle. Now take your PVC and your two full length markers and put the end of the marker right at the notch on this end of the bow. Then take the other one and put the end at the notch on the other end of the PVC. Then you're gonna use your tape measure to measure from this end of the marker to this end of the marker and then find the middle point and mark it. In this case, it is 16 and three quarters. Then we put all of our markers center lined up and we're gonna wrap them in a little duct tape. Take this bundle and slide it into the PVC so that the end is right at the notch. Now we take our paracord, make a loop, tie it off. Put the loop into the notch on this side, extend the paracord to the other end, and make another loop that is about four inches short of the other notch. Then to string the bow, you put the string around the notch on one end, step through it with your foot, and then remember, you're not arm wrestling this thing. You just lean into it with your body. You're not using your bicep or your shoulder, really. You just lean forward with it and put the string around the other notch. So now I'm gonna bring it outside and test fire it. Oh. Well, would you look at that? I got my throwaway targets down there. Alright, frequently asked question whenever I make a video about a bow, is the fiberglass core completely necessary? Yes and no. No, it's not necessary if you just want an okay bow that you can do a little bit of shooting with. Yes, it is necessary if you want a good bow. It's going to give the bow a much higher draw weight and it's also going to prevent the center of the PVC from deforming, which would permanently reduce the draw weight. The other thing people usually want to know is what kind of draw weight do these things have? Now, because people have asked for previous videos that I've done on bows, I'm just going to run through a quick list of some bows that I've made. I've I've got this little three quarter inch PVC pulley bow. This pulls about 25 pounds. Then you've got the bow that you just watched me make with the three quarter inch PVC and the four, technically three fiberglass rods that I put on the inside. This is gonna pull about 35 pounds. Then I've got this one that I didn't actually make. This was actually a gift from a subscriber. He estimated that it pulled about 60 or 65 pounds. Sorry, I actually just weighed all these things and this actually pulls about 45 pounds. But don't worry, 45 pounds is actually what a lot of Native Americans use to hunt deer and elk and stuff like that. So it's definitely nothing to be ashamed of. This is still a really good bow. And then lastly, I've got the most powerful bow that I've ever made. This is made with one inch PVC 
and it's got eight fiberglass rods on the inside. And this is gonna pull 75 pounds. To be completely honest, I can't even draw it back all the way. It's really that powerful. But it really just goes to show how powerful a bow made of PVC and some driveway markers can be. I'll do a quick power test for you guys. All right, also bear in mind this arrow is really, really light. I guarantee if I just had a slightly heavier arrow, they would go a lot deeper in there. Uh, but just as a baseline test between the bows, this will do just fine. First off, the 25 pound pulley bow. That penetrated almost exactly three and a half inches. Now the 35 pound longbow. And that one got almost exactly five inches. Now the subscriber recurve bow. About six and a quarter inches. And I'll try my very best with the monster bow. <laughs> That's weird. It got about five and a half inches. I'm gonna give it another shot. All right, almost the exact same as the 45 pound recurve bow. That's pretty interesting. You know, I've never actually done research into what the point of a recurve bow was. Maybe it actually does have something to do with launching the arrow faster with a lower draw weight. I really don't know. But that is really interesting that it has like the same penetrating power as the bow that puts out like 30 more pounds. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. Cause yeah, maybe I'm not drawing this back 100% of the way, but it's not like I'm just going 10 or 15%. Like I am getting really close to the end of the draw and getting really good power out of it. It just seems that this recurve bow somehow just works more efficiently or something that I really just can't figure out. Sorry if this is like boring for you guys, but this is really interesting to me. Now I've been wanting to figure out how to make one of these things since basically the second I opened up this package. Learning this weirdness about it just makes me want to make it all that much more. But that's all I got for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please go and check out the Backyard Boyer. If you want to make one of these 75 pound draw weight bows, he'll give you much better in-depth detailed explanations about uh, the different lengths of the fiberglass cores on the inside because like I said this one uses eight the one I showed you only uses four but if you want me to figure out how to make one of these things and teach you guys how to make it then please share the video like the video all that good stuff just so I know that you guys are interested but that's all I got for today so thank you all very much for watching I'll talk to you later bye Then we've got the bow, that, now the 35 pound long bow. Hello? Hey, sorry, I'm outside. I didn't want to walk in on your video again. Well, it's playing through the speakers, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, can I come in? Yeah. Can I borrow like a nail or something? I'm trying to like burn the paper more accurately. Because if I just use the lighter, then it just kind of the whole thing bursts into flames.